All right, it's been a week since you've heard our podcast. Was it something we said? <laughs> oh, with that classic introduction, we could only be watching one thing. It's the Paul Lind Halloween special, shown on October 29th, 1976 on ABC! Mm -hmm. Theme song. We must be way out of town by now. You're hitting fewer people. <laughs> Where are we going? Away from those pesky kids with their Halloween pranks. Some place where no kids can ever find you. And Jeremy drops a little clip in. And perfect. Hey, everyone. You're listening to Network Special, the only podcast you need if you want to hear about appointment television. Television you used to have to watch when it was on but now, thanks to the magic of the internet, we can watch these things over again and again. My name is Zachariah, and I am one of your hosts, and here with my co-host... Nathan Spooky Shear. I don't know. I'm trying to think of a good one. I no, perfect. Good pun. <laughs> and Yeah, it worked right away. Nathan Scare. And in the spooky production booth, who is it? I don't know why every time I get like surprised that my name gets brought up. <laughs> I am Jeremy Demer. I got like scrambling to get to the microphone. Oh, hold on, hold on. Can I do this one? Jeremy Cemetery. Wow, perfect. <laughs> that one worked. That one yeah, worked. Solid. And Zachariah. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Just a scary way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, here we go. We're gonna get into it. This is this is your classic '70s variety show. And sometimes I hear people saying, "Oh, I, I miss the old '70s oh. variety show formats." And then I say, "Well, if you watched one recently, you'd stop <laughs> saying that pretty quickly if you actually got into it." Because um, oh man. This is a this is a special that I know is it's kind of well known. I think it is well known for the beginning, the end, and the musical guest. And people mm -hmm. probably just forget about everything else, which I would, and I would the everything else I would not necessarily call Halloween themed. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> I mean, everything. No, this, this was like the Halloween like, stuff um, is what we remember from. It was it. like a Carol the Carol Burnett show pop like turned on on accident in the middle of a Halloween <laughs> special. In the middle of a uh, 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 Halloween store. Yeah. The spirit <laughs> Halloween store. Um, and, you know, this, by the way, for those of you who want these kinds of shows to come back, they Stop have even old. done modern versions of them. And those are bad, too. Like, there's no good way to do this format. It's going to be bad. Unless you're doing a joke of it. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think the last... Uh, what, what do you think was the last sincere one that you watched? Um, I think there was one... Um, oh, you know what? Maybe like... A, no, because if we're talking... This is like live stage, that kind of stuff. Gosh. I remember watching the Lady Gaga I don't know. Muppets special and going, oof, boy, this is bad. <laughs> You said Lady Gaga Muppet special? Yeah, the Thanksgiving special. See, nobody remembers it because it was <sighs> not a good. It should have been good. Didn't See, didn't really work. But we're not Wasn't here. there one with like Maya Rudolph or something? You're thinking of probably the Bill Murray Very Murray Christmas, no. the Sofia Coppola. Although that's kind of the closest okay. to this format. Do we do we consider those because I liked that one, okay. but I felt like that wasn't this because it didn't have live stage, uh, which is what for me ruins all these things. Well, you mean pretend live stage because, of course, this is piped in applause. Yeah. And but and, I don't think we'd ever go back to that because it's uh, that's just that's 70s format with laugh tracks. I yeah. think if you're talking about that, it's going to be a live audience now. Yeah. I, I mean, I like the Bill Murray thing. I liked 
you know, I like um I like the Lonely Island <laughs> specials, you know, like where they're mm-hmm. doing like bits and stuff like that. But, but so I but I don't consider that what this is, which is a you know that's the, but a, I think very, that's the like mo- a Smothers Brothers kind of like I mean I don't I like the Smothers Brothers, but you know what I mean? Like a very much like just <sighs> tonight on you know, like the Muppets, you just call it the Muppets. Like yeah. it's the freaking Muppets, but with real people. I think in in this kind of thing, though, it is repackaging something that people remember in the way that they think they remember it. Because in the seventies, for some weird reason, there was this giant throwback still to like vaudeville turn of the century kind of oh. look to everything so that's kind of what they're aping like that's what the Muppet show looks like they're in old vaudeville theater it has that kind of like big poster with the circus letters type of look to it so it's going to have that like uh you know get the big hook to get the guy off the stage and then do you think that's um a byproduct of having um Lots of Jewish representation in the writers rooms and stuff that it's they're pulling possibly, from that, or is this just cultural? Um, you know, I think that's possibly uh, part of it, and I think another part of it was our grandparents. That is when their parents grew up, so it is like yeah. us having a fondness for the fifties. Yeah, you know, it's a a much removed generational thing. So I think. You know, things like Very Murray Christmas are laid out in a way that is the modern day variety show. And it feels like how we might remember specials like the Paul Lynn special being if you didn't go back and actually watch it and realize how kind of like clunky it is. Do you know what I mean? It's like re it's like when you reimagine any kind of property, you're more trying to get that part of people's brains, how, how they felt rather than literally what it was. This thing just starts. <laughs> like, it is like 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 when you like when you think about Paul Lind and you're like well, let's talk uh, let's talk oh, yeah. let's talk Paul Lind. Yeah, so <laughs> if you don't know who Paul so, Lind is, not everyone's going to know. Paul Paul Lind uh He's the guy who talks like you've ever heard a cartoon. Oh, and they talk like this. Come on, you stinker. Then they're it's doing- either it's either him or someone doing an impression of him. That's absolutely right. <laughs> if it is done after 1982, it's somebody doing an impression of Paul Lind. Um, he was Uncle Arthur on Bewitched. He was in Bye Bye Birdie, but he's probably best known as being the middle circle on Hollywood Squares from 1968 to 1981. Holy Woo! smoke. That's a lot of closeted gay jokes because the big thing yeah. about Paul Lind, um, Ohio's own Paul Lind, is nice. that he uh, he was a, a a gay man and he did a lot of kind of like covert gay humor, especially on Hollywood Squares. But it was definitely the era where if you were of a certain age, you didn't come out. And it led to him, you know, yeah. not to be <laughs> depressing about it, but he had a pretty depressive life, frustrations yeah. of not being able to come out. I think he always wanted to be a serious actor, which, hey, man, get the work where you can. Um, oh, and also, <laughs> and don't, I always don't drink and be addicted to pills. That's the other part of the uh, equation, which is a cl- which is basically like was a requirement for everyone of, of that age in yeah, Hollywood. I mean, he died at fifty five after being clean he, for two years. So don't he, stop drinking, everyone. Yeah, have fun while while you can. <laughs> uh, he, what I remember him most was as Templeton, the rat. Yeah. In Charlotte's, in Charlotte's Web. Web. And uh, that's like my favorite scene of the whole movie is the affair is a fair and I love Marcus Park, Marcus Park, Marcus Park. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, hey, the guy was funny. Also, <laughs> he was a funny guy. <laughs> he was. And, and also, now, okay, believe us when we say that. Because if your only exposure is to this, to this <laughs> special, you will not believe it. Okay. <laughs> There's a great joke that I that some I think um, Todd Glass used to do, used to imp- impersonate, him, but it was but he was it was he was saying a joke that Paul Lind actually said, which 
it makes me laugh so hard. And it's, um, <laughs> it smells like pussy in here, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, that joke is so good. <laughs> and I don't know where he would have said that or what, you know. To his or friends, like in probably. What, <laughs> what's that? To his friends, to, probably. <laughs> well, well, like, I didn't know if, like, there was, like, he was in a sketch where there was, like, a cat in the room or something. You know, or something like that where he would have been able to say it. Oh, I see. Um, you know what I mean? Right. I know he did stand up for a while. And then I think once he got popular, he just had other people do all the writing for him. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Bruce Valanche. <laughs> yes. This, uh, so this Halloween special uh, came about because Paul Lind was a very popular performer because he was a big hit on Bewitched. He was a big hit mm-hmm. on Hollywood Squares. And he got a giant multi million dollar contract with ABC where they were basically like for a number of years, we will find a way for you to work on our channel. So they tried two different sitcoms. They tried a variety show and they all flopped because as a legendary comedy writer, Bruce Valanche, who was one of the writers on this Halloween special says, uh, Paul Lind is a great small ingredient in something. You have him come on and you do a couple lines with him and he's going to kill it. But an hour <laughs> of oh. Paul Lind goes a long way and you just can't expect people to just sit with this. It's not It's not like Pee Wee where there's like levels to it and he lives in this little universe no. and you can kind of like hang with Pee Wee. Paul Lind is just <laughs> like a cheese grater after a while. He says, he says... Every joke with the exact same cadence and with a little chuckle afterwards. And it's at every single joke is that way, no matter how good, no matter how funny, no matter if it's even a joke. That's <laughs> Sometimes true. he'll just do it. And he'll it'll just be the cadence is just, you know, my mother came today and uh, oh <laughs> 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 like, like and that's everything. And that's and it is funny. Like there are times where it's like really freaking funny. Yeah, but then all the other times it's like, <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, so this special uh, came about because ABC was basically desperate to to put him in something, so they just started giving yeah. him yearly specials, and they started off yeah. with the Halloween special because also as Bruce Flanch says, there's something witchy about Paul Lind. Um, <laughs> So we, as you said, this just starts. We start <laughs> off in what's obstinately Paul Lynn's house, and he's dressed as Santa Claus, and he's decorating the tree. And then Margaret Hamilton, who is an <laughs> actor who played uh, most famously the Wicked Witch of the West, mm-hmm. but <laughs> who he calls Margaret, and I'm guessing it's still Margaret Hamilton, but she is also his maid. <laughs> yeah, so I guess it's when she's keeper. not acting, <laughs> she cleans uh, Paul Lynn's house. Um, and she tells him it's not Christmas. Cut to him in a rabbit suit. She says mm-hmm. it's not Easter. Cut to him with a Valentine's heart. Am I right? Yep. Yes. Yep. Uh, she cuts him off again. And she goes, we go through this every year. And he goes, oh, fine. Happy Halloween. It's like, why, why does Paul but it's like, hate Halloween? It really is like, like okay. It's like someone hits the, the play button on the tape for this show. And it's like, oh, like it's instant. <laughs> it's instant. What kind of, what kind of easing into the bathwater did you want for the Paul and Halloween special? I wanted at least... Uh, like a um, what do you call it when you play the music to all the songs? You wanted a full overture. <laughs> I you wanted, wanted a picture of a, of a of a curtain with the word overture, and we're just hearing all the songs <laughs> we'll be hearing throughout the I wanted, evening. I wanted a credit scene with just a little <laughs> bit of overture, and then you know they they slowly pan into him at the Christmas tree, and he says, "Oh, hello." <laughs> And then he jumps into it or something. Okay. All right. Uh, hey, f- good note. 
<laughs> Good note. <laughs> um, so then from there, well, I, this is like, I'm confused. Like, well, I don't well, understand what do you why mean? He, I'm a little confused. Why do they go to this castle? <laughs> Glo- Gloomsbury Manor. Um, Margaret Hamilton says, hey, let's get away for Halloween. Let's go to my sister's house. And so they go okay. to her sister's house, which is a spooky mansion. Um, and her sister is Witchy Poo from H.R. Puff and stuff. And then Margaret Hamilton turns into the Wicked Witch of the West. Um, right. And those are his sister. Oh, wait. It's also his sister. Right? Okay, that's what I could... No, this is what Bruce Valanche says in the interview you sent me. He misremembers but I it think then. he's wrong. Yeah, okay. it is not his sisters. Right, okay. But they are sisters. They're the yeah, witch sisters. Something. Okay. Yeah. So now he is stuck on Halloween with these witch uh, sisters. By the way, Margaret Hamilton, who is in her... I want to say her 80s when she does this. She's still got it. Great I, voice like, on that woman. I was like... How old? Like I was like I was like wait a second. When did Wizard of Oz come out? It's like in the 30s, right? Yeah, it's really. <laughs> she's really old. I, she's belting like, out that laugh. I'm like she she looks like she did in the movie. I know. <laughs> That's the great thing about having a real tomahawk face is you'll just look the same <laughs> age forever. People go, oh, you look great. Uh, oh, have an did, age today. <laughs> Did we forget that before they go to Gloomsbury Manor, um, he's on a stage with a giant pumpkin with Christmas lights, and he does a long monologue about how oh. he used to be fat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, okay, do they do the dance number before they go to the mansion? He does his monologue about how he used to be. He does a, a string of fat jokes about how he was a chubby kid, and then he starts singing Kids from Bye Bye Birdie, but he's changed yes. the lyrics slightly to be about trick-or-treaters and adults in devil masks dance around him. Okay. The, okay. Uh, I think I found my this year's Halloween costume. It's you as Paul Lind? Or no, you no, no, one no, of these no, dancers? No, no. One is the dancers. There's this one that looks awesome. The... the she or he or she's wearing a a white like bag over their head with a scary like p- face and there's devil horns sticking out of it. Oh, I see what you mean. This looks like a yeah, I'm looking at the clip right now. This it looks like a person in a devil costume but they also have a ghost mask on. A ghost mask and it's that very popular in horror movies now uh the floppy face killer. Where it's a person yeah. who has a saggy bag for a mask. Yeah. They look like one of the, they look like, um, uh, like one of the, like from Charlie Brown. Yeah. It's, it <laughs> is, um, yeah, it's, a, that's an intense looking face on that thing. Now you yeah. have to remember to post a picture of it in the show Instagram. I'm not going to show. Least- oh, 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 oh yeah. What? Oh, re- someone, okay. Someone call me or something. And remind me oh to update God. the notes on our <laughs> on our podcast entries because I forget every time I promise that I'm going to post something there. All right. Um, oh, and we almost forgot to say that the kids in the dance number throw Pauland in a garbage can and then Donnie and Marie Osmond come up and they throw dynamite in the garbage can <laughs> and they blow him <laughs> up. <laughs> That's right. Because he says something like, who is to, who's responsible for this? And then you see it's Donnie Murray. Yeah. Um, back to the castle. Hey, did you notice that Paul Lind is dressed like 1970s Doctor Who in this? He's a <laughs> no, scarf I that goes twice to the floor and like a, a tan uh, coat. Um, anyway, uh, so they say this in the Wikipedia, and I guess I remember this. He meets the witch sisters, believing they have been unjustly given a bad reputation. They commission Paul to serve as a public relations expert to remove their image. To seal the deal, (laughs) they offer him three wishes. That's never returned to, right? Like, they never talk about the PR for witches after that second, right? I don't remember anything like that. No, I I I don't even think I noticed that he was given three wishes. (laughs) I I knew the wish thing. Until the end. 
until the well, end when he says, this is my last wish. Nathan, of course you're going to notice the wishes <laughs> because the first thing he wishes for is that he was a big rig truck driver. <laughs> I could not, I phased, somehow I faded out and I could not figure out why he was now a truck driver <laughs> and I did not want to re- rewind. <laughs> we go to a sequence, a, a long, long sketch where he's playing oh. a character called Big Red, who is a CB talking truck driver in a rhinestone studded outfit. Um, <laughs> we see uh, 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 Tim Conway. As a truck rival truck driver, he drives him off the road, kills him, uh, and he's he's going to a diner where Pinky Tuscadero from Happy Days is working because he's mm-hmm. going to marry her. Yep. Uh, and then uh, Tim Conway shows up as a different truck driver, a rival, and they mm-hmm. have a a dance off competition. They have a competition. They have a competition. A strong off. Yes, right. And Billy Barty's there as well. He's the manager of the place. Billy Barty, yes. the little person, the Billy little Barty. person, yeah, who who was the voice of Figment at Epcot, and also right. on UHF, the cameraman. Yeah, and he was in Wizard of Oz. Yeah, and he's old, old friends too. reuniting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, Pinky Tuscadero's character in the sketch is called Kinky Pinky, which has got to be. <laughs> Oh, Bruce Valanche must have just been rolling and rolling, which is not hard for Bruce Valanche. <laughs> well, he does. Some of that, okay. Uh, uh, some of that skin might get in the way of that. <laughs> Sorry. Bruce Valanche has, uh, he's not just obese. He has the most skin. <laughs> it, okay. It looks like he's wearing a, a fleshy neck brace. <laughs> yeah. If a neck brace was just a donut. <laughs> sorry guys sorry sorry I, I don't want to make fun of people's looks but it's his it's look he's wearing he has a page he haircut right? he oh a he a, yes he has a page wig that he wears all the time he also used to have a massive beard which looked pretty yeah. good yeah but he had to get out the lawnmower <laughs> to shave it off <laughs> it's an inspiration to white men everywhere not to shave their crappy beard <laughs> when you see yeah. Bruce Flanch's neck and you remember your own <laughs> oh, did, okay. Let me ask you. One of the other writers on the show was Ron Perlman. Is not that, that Ron. Not that Ron Perlman. It? Okay, <laughs> not okay. Hellboy. I, I thought for sure that there were multiple Ron Perlmans. Yes, yes. But but it, but it, I didn't I didn't deep dive to see. I wish, I wish Ron Perlman was throwing out one liners for Paul Lind <laughs> at the beginning of his career <laughs> when he was nineteen or something. <laughs> Uh, boy, how, how did you like this funny, um, trucker sketch in the middle of the Halloween I hated episode? It. <laughs> I hated it. I, um, you know, it was, I, I thought for sure. I thought, oh, maybe I'll like the Tim Conway scenes. Oh, sure. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, like before I got into this, I thought, oh, this is going to be funny. I like Paul Lind. And watching this now, I am confused. Maybe I don't like him, <laughs> and I just like bits and pieces. Maybe I really just like him on the when he's improvising on, you know, he's a seasoning. Star, the, what's that? He's a seasoning. He's not the main course. It's just how it, yeah, exactly. Uh, just how it goes. And sometimes. I thought Tim Conway would be a lot more funnier, way way funnier. But he was. He wasn't. He was. He's, Almost playing, he was like playing the straight man, kind of. <laughs> Do you think that these were just sketches they had laying around? Because doesn't it seem like writing a Halloween themed sketch is a pretty easy thing to do? <laughs> right? I don't understand. There are there's two sketches in this, right? Yeah, two long fo- like sketches, and neither of them are Halloween. No, this one is long because it also has a musical hoedown number at the end, which oh goes gosh. on for eternity. The second one is not as long. It just feels long because it's very uncomfortable. Uh, but before we get to that <laughs> hilarity, who do we get but Kiss? Kiss yes. is performing in this spooky mansion. Um, it's performing their most Halloween song. 
Detroit yeah, Rock City. Detroit Rock City. <laughs> Uh, Kiss, who had just released their Destroyer album, who had not been a band for that long. I guess was this, this was their first appearance on TV beyond like a concert style show. So this is a big deal for Kiss. Do you think that? I mean, this is a question for the ages. I'm sure. Mm. But when I listened to those songs, I enjoyed the songs. But do you think that without? the stage antics and makeup and stuff that they are it just loved at all oh a kiss is a a genius marketing campaign so you so you think that their music alone is not good enough let me put it this way <laughs> i so i'm speaking as a person who i don't i guess i don't, I guess I don't. hate Kiss's music. I've never been moved to buy it. But when I hear it, I go, oh, okay, this is definitely like the music that typifies this era. I can see why it would sell, but there's a reason why you can buy Kiss shot glasses at Target and you can't buy Loverboy shot glasses (laughs) because the branding of their name and they, they like were one of the first people to do a marketing blitz first thing out the love gun like they had (laughs) their comic book they had their makeup they had their uh fan club kits like they had everything ready to go and it's just like they're they're insatiable marketers you know as gene simmons says if you can put a kiss logo on it we will sell it famous cool nice guy Uh, gene simmons (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like like okay obviously i know that the reason why they are what they are today is because of that i just wondered in an alternate universe does the kiss does kiss as a band without all of that stuff just go down as just another like you said lover boy where they've had hits and people know who they are but also they're not like it, like in the constant eye of everyone all the time well you mean now or at the time? I guess at the time, like I mean, because like songs like Beth and like you know Detroit Rock City. I mean, those are those are those are, those are perfectly fine songs from that genre that I could see being big hits even without the makeup. So I'm that's why I'm wondering, like, do they still have and do they have a normal career without the makeup, or are they just a fly by night? I I mean, who knows about like the level, but they wouldn't have been talked about the way that they are at the time because they were also controversial. I mean, people thought they were evil. They thought they stood for, you know, knights in Satan's service. (laughs) People thought that they were real murderers and they spit real blood because people believed anything in the 70s. Like, they were... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they were viewed as like Marilyn Manson of the time, which is adorable when you hear their songs and it's like about boogieing and kissing girls. <laughs> They're not singing about anything. Even stuff like Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper at least had the decency to write like Welcome to My Nightmare and that kind of thing. But most of Alice yeah. Cooper's songs are is not about evil and creepy it's just (laughs) songs about partying he just had a guillotine on stage and put eye makeup on you know yeah right jeremy you're a musician what's your opinion on kiss uh i don't think without the makeup and the old hubaloo from moms kiss (laughs) kiss would be as successful as they were what do you think of kiss's music of course it's not bad. It's not like um, it's not groundbreaking by any means. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what, but that's what I'm saying. Songs. Like, are they just a regular band? Like, does the regular band work for them, or do not they as, just never get signed? Well, remember when they, they they had a whole thing where they didn't do the makeup and their concert yeah, but, sales were bad. But it was, yeah, I know. But by that point, we're already past into this. I'm just saying, like, if if if. If you and I come up with Detroit Rock City in that time frame and we just come out there and we play like metal or, you know, like no, like you heavy rock it. guys. Look, I like Lady Gaga, but I wouldn't probably know who she was. She wouldn't have like hit as hard if yeah. she wasn't like coming out 
dressed as a, a, a crystal swan. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you do have to have a okay. gimmick and you have to get a way to get people's attention. My thing with Kiss, and I'm going to get everybody who likes Kiss mad at me, uh, <laughs> the level of success that they have had for so long is a little mind boggling to me with the level of uh, songs that are known. Like, yeah, when you think I, about the I, I number of songs I don't people can name. The current. Yeah. I don't understand, songs do people, like, the continuous. Right. That's just all merchandising. That's just, like, buying a branded shirt, I guess. Because what are the songs people would know from Kiss? Detroit, Rock, uh, Detroit Rock City, maybe. I mean, maybe. <laughs> you know, I uh, could <laughs> All night long, or I mean, party every day. They know oh yeah, that one. That's the main one. That's the main one. I mean, that's the one that is played in sports stadiums, and definitely people know. Maybe they know Detroit Rock City. Maybe they know Beth, but it's only going to be old people who are twenty two don't know Beth. I barely know that song because it sounds I, I, like nothing else yeah. they've ever. That was a hit, anyway. Yeah, I think I'm more familiar with like. New York Groove or whatever, which is like the, one of their solo songs, you know, like like than I am with their actual music. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, I I just don't understand why you would continue to go to see them every year that they go on tour. Like, what new thing are they going to bring? Well, like, it, I like my favorite artist has been Folds, and I've seen them a few times. But sometimes, like when he's coming, I don't think oh, I sh- I should really go check him out again because <laughs> I know he's going to what he's going to do. For acts like Kiss, it is about consistency. That's the reason when they have a new drummer, they put on the cat makeup, even though it's not Peter Chris. You know what I mean? Like, you go to see the Kiss show that they did in the 1970s with better pyrotechnics. You know, it's yeah. like it's like what uh, Rob Zombie said he loved going to see the Ramones because he said it didn't matter when you saw the Ramones. It was going to, you knew what the show you were going to see, and you're going to see that show. <laughs> they were going to stand with their legs far apart, far apart from each other, and play the same like three chord songs that you, you knew they were going to. And yeah. they were going to look the same. <laughs> except Can for Dee Dee. Oh, go on. Except, except for Dee Dee Ramone, who was going <laughs> to try to rap. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm Diddy Ramon. <laughs> I'm here at G- at Diddy Ramon. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I'm going down there like New York. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, listen to Diddy Ramon's rap album if you've never heard it. It's really incredible. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Can we talk about one of the jokes that Paul Lynn says when he's in the castle? He's trying to get away and he says, he says, I'm not done talking kiss, but go for it. <laughs> okay. Well, we can get back and kiss, but <laughs> okay, I just want to, yeah. he says, I, I have to get back home. I left my jacuzzi on fast forward. Yeah. What does that mean? Maybe people didn't know what jacuzzis were at that point. <laughs> I'm just. I was like trying to think. Like, what does fast forward mean? Like, what's the joke? Uh, I I could not tell you. All right, back to kiss. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, what'd you think of Kiss's line delivery <laughs> when they stop playing their song? And uh, by the way, I I will say for as much uh, who kind of shrug things that I've said about Kiss so far. Watching them do the Detroit Rock City performance, and they've only been a band for like three or four years. I was like, okay, this obviously would be the time. I would go see them if they were like this. Yeah. They look very yeah. excited now. <laughs> they could not look more bored <laughs> to play their song. <laughs> but they're they're really going for it at this point. Okay. His it's Gene Simmons, right? Or is it Paul Stanley's line delivery? Can't Gene Simmons seems like the one who can talk. Yeah. So <laughs> whoever it is, uh, I almost felt like is he 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 feel this feels like he's really annoyed with this. Are you talking about Paul Stanley Star Child, right? Was, Boy, what yes. if we had said so you were <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the way he said it, I was like, 
Was that re- was that was that in the script? <laughs> uh, so the members. By the of way, Kiss, I was gonna say when, yeah. when every every single actor or ever actress or whatever is on the show and they're all singing, and I was gonna say that every like I feel like everyone had to be a singer back then if you wanted to be famous. But then mm-hmm. I heard everyone sing. <laughs> And I was like, you were no, they'll just put you on anyways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you know how to sing. The thing about uh, Kiss is, and I, I believe, and somebody will scream at me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was Ace Freely who is such a, a marble mouth that when they did their special two years later, which I'm sure we will cover on this podcast, uh, mm-hmm. Kiss meets the Phantom of the Park, they redubbed their lines with voice actors because they were such <laughs> mush mouths. Wait, was that a TV special? Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought it was a movie. Uh, okay, it was good. both. <laughs> All right, so Kiss sings, and then we go back to, like, what happens there? Like, we go straight to the next Wish sketch? Well, of course, they're playing. Uh, Paul Lind is playing Monopoly with his witch sisters, and uh, That's right. he he wish he wishes he was in the Sahara Desert as compared to playing that boring game. So we get to see him dressed up as a sheik, sheik, oh. where he is a like a real Valentino sheik in the desert, and he has kidnapped Florence Henderson to rape her, and uh, Tim Conway comes to save her. And uh, but she has fallen in love with uh, Paul Lind, and so she comes back. And that's all we have to say about that. <laughs> that is was <laughs> sketch was horrible. There was it was like a drama piece thrown into the middle of this wacky <laughs> special, like because there were no laughs. No. The only joke, the only funny joke in the whole thing, if there was any, was he gives this uh, soldier a parrot and then he says, it gets lonely out there sometimes for the Foreign Legion. Like that was like the only joke. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) My gosh. And then there was this really like weird like kiss between Paul Lind and Florence Henderson. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to see Paul Lind uh landing big erotic kisses Sloppy. on women. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, we, you know, uh, yeah, let's just get through that. that, that, that yeah. I, I, like yeah, I just yeah, wrote yeah, in my yeah, notes yeah. like I hate this. Oh my god, I hate this. Yeah. Cuz we go <laughs> we go back to the castle and Paul Lind of course, a a uh, 40-year-old man is going to wish that he was in a discotheque. And so no, they no, turn, no, no, no. No. The, he, okay. He gives them his last wish. Mm. And says that you guys need this. I forget why he gives it to them. And then they wish to go into a discotheque or something. They wish for something. And the response is, we'll go to a discotheque. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, he still he still puts the fuel on that fire. Paul <laughs> Lind is just the last person I would ever think of a, a you know, Paul Lind, what, what do you associate with Paul Lind? A crank, a crab. He's not going to suggest going to a disco. He doesn't go to Studio 54. I, uh, not to dance. <laughs> I know, still though. <laughs> so, uh, it, the uh, studio is now a discotheque, and uh, Florence Henderson, we're not done with her yet. She comes back out to sing a disco version of that old Black Magic, and Kiss comes back for some reason and sings a little bit of Beth, and then mm-hmm. sings King of the Nighttime World, which I'm sure was a hit for them. I wasn't familiar with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Pinky comes back out and sings Disco Baby, which is a re configured version of Disco Lady, which was a huge hit. They don't turn it into something about Halloween. They just call it Disco Baby. <laughs> There's not like Disco Halloween Crazy. <laughs> no. Uh, and that's that's how we leave with them all dancing dancing around. <laughs> and well, that's and the then, Halloween and, special. <laughs> and 
And then Paul Lynn comes out at the end and he gives this really like sincere and heartfelt like thank you. Like, thank you for making me feel wanted. Thank, like, <laughs> thank, I don't know who he's talking to. Um, it sounds like he's, he's talking just, to his sponsor. Oh, like he had just had a suicide attempt before yeah. like this came out. Yeah. And then, and then there's credits and then, and then like for some reason at the very end of the credits, like it's like, it just ends with him going like, happy Halloween, everybody or something like that. It just cuts. And it's like weird. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, this, I, the, 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 my favorite thing about this special was the set design for the castle. I love the big open space with all the big, um, with like uh, the the seating arrangement in the middle and everything. I, I really liked the set design. I agree. I'm looking to see what channel the, you know, the Adams family was also on ABC. I wonder if there yeah. was stuff left over from the set because it's a very intricate, well-funded looking set that I don't think they would spend the money on new stuff for this special. I, right, that that it may it really did feel like um, a colorized version of the Adams Family House. Yeah, I'm curious if I went in and I like freeze frame some Adams Family stuff and then looked at the set if I could spot props. I'm not going to, yeah. but I bet I could. I'll wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, that rug, maybe. <laughs> so let's see here um did i like this you know what this is a thing where if you're having a halloween party i think you could ugh. the thing i would say oh if you're having a halloween party throw it on as a thing in the background but then there's going to be these sequences where he's pulling a big rig driver and a chic <laughs> if he's right. dancing around with two witches or kisses on that works but so i guess Maybe if I edited those scenes down, it would work. But otherwise, no, they're, they're the witches. That's it. Literally, the witches. Everything. The music. There's not a thing that's Halloweenish except the dance number. Yep. Um, the the witches, mm -hmm. and then maybe the discotheque because there is uh, electrified bats and stuff like neon that's bats. That's true. And stuff. That's true. But you cut out the two Carol Burnett sketches. Yeah. Um, and you cut out, which, which is basically like 40 minutes of the show. <laughs> so this is a 51 minute long production. I'm guessing about 20 minutes, 25 minutes of that was those sketches, right? Oh, too long, too that long. Yeah. Big cut rig it down. One just skip around like in, it's skip around in YouTube one, if you want to. Yeah. The big rig one felt like an episode of happy days. Like <laughs> It felt like that long. <laughs> Yeah, you really got bang for your buck with this. Oh, and Betty White was in this too. Okay, that was uh, our episode yeah. <laughs> about uh, Paul Lynn's Halloween special. <laughs> Don't forget, uh, did, I mean, was there more of a review? I'm saying if you want to see this and you want to get that like little taste of what this era of TV was, watch the beginning, skip around in it, but you don't feel like if you don't watch the whole thing, you're not going to miss any gold. Even irony gold, I don't think you're going to miss. No, it's it's tragic this thing. <laughs> this special it really is like <laughs> it's a bummer because yeah, I've always been wanting to watch this and this was my reason to watch it and I wish that we had never started this show. <laughs> 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 That's how much I liked this thing. <laughs> well, before we go, can I can I tell my Gene Simmons story? Oh, I wish you would. Uh that, Gene Simmons as Stony. Famous <laughs> <laughs> Famous cool guy, uh, Gene Simmons, who is just a nightmare of a human being, was at the Wizard World Comic Con that I was sent to film so I could get into all the panels or whatever. So I, I went into his, his Q&A. Gene Simmons, who does not take his sunglasses off uh, ever, apparently now, he is doing Q&A with the audience and he's coming down with the wireless microphone and possibly... He's not taking the sunglasses off because if you told me that he was sleepwalking, I would have believed you <laughs> for how laconic this guy is. He's like, all right, let's do another question over here. <laughs> and I forget what this guy's 
question was. And this poor, this poor slob who's asking the question, he's doing the horrible thing that nobody likes, but it's easy to do if you're very nervous, which is he's not asking a question. He is going into a, a story about what a big fan he was. And he's mm-hmm. just saying how much he loved his music or whatever. Yeah. So he's going, Oh man, Gene, I mean, I, I love your stuff. And like, you know, huh, my parents didn't like it too much and they tried to throw my albums out, but I, I hid them from them, Gene. And you know, I watched <laughs> that movie Detroit rock city. I was like, Oh, is this my life? I feel like it was my life on screen. And Gene Simmons <laughs> is standing unmoving, staring at this guy. And I, I'm realizing now this is a better story for Pujol, but I'm going to show it to you now. As the guy is talking, going, oh, Gene, and I just love this stuff. You see Gene Simmons' hand slowly coming up and moving towards the man's microphone. And as the guy is talking, Gene Simmons puts his hand around the microphone and takes it out of his hand. So you hear the guy, and Gene, I just love the way that you just don't care. And you know, you feel like you always... <laughs> Gene Simmons just takes the microphone and goes, yeah, I hear that from a lot of people. <laughs> he kind of shuffles yeah. off to the next guy. Yeah, what was he like? There like, for? like, like thirty years, <laughs> ago, like thirty years ago, he would have been like, "Oh, thanks, man." Maybe, maybe. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. He strikes me as just a horrible person for all seasons. Oh gosh, uh, what was the reasoning for them to have him at this event? Kiss, yeah, Kiss was enormous. Kiss had just released Destroyer. Which had, uh, no, I think he means at the event you were at. Oh, yeah. Because if you tell Gene Simmons, we'll give you money to be here, <laughs> I, I believe the man shows. Before we go, I don't know if this can happen, mm-hmm. but I'm requesting it because it's one of my three wishes. Oh. Can we please hear Stoney do an impression of Paul Lind? <laughs> Is there a way for that to work? <laughs> um, boy, let me look up. Paul, do Lynch. we have that in the budget? Let's is what we should wonder. See here. I'm so uh, right now. Let me look up some 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 Paul Lind quotes that I can okay. uh, ask Stony to do. Uh, I'll sing. I'll Na- sing. Where Nathan? Where you can you go to the Paul Lind up. Wikipedia page, please? To the what? The Paul Lind Wikipedia page. And I want you to scroll down and go to the section. Uh, there's a little gray box that has Q&A questions that were on Hollywood Squares. And I want you to pick one of them. And you're going to give Stoney the uh, the question line. And he's going to give the, the, the joke, right? The joke okay, answer. and you're saying... Um, oh, I see. I see the cue. Okay. Now, um, should we bring Stoney in? I mean, yeah, he's, we'll bring Stoney in. Have, yeah, okay. have you picked one out or do you need a second? Cause I can, I can vamp for a second um, by, uh, reading, uh, let's see. And make sure here. to let Stoney know what, a, what a big fan you are like that. Uh, <laughs> like Gene Simmons and that other, that other guy. <laughs> While you do okay, that. You ready? Uh, oh, are you all I'm set? ready? Yeah, You know, just because I have it in front of me, let me just say Gene Simmons had a short uh, acting career. He still pops up in movies every now and then. Uh, I was just going to say the plot summary to the 1986 movie Never Too Young to Die, starring John Stamos, Vanity, and Gene Simmons. Uh, the, the plot is a top secret agent is murdered, so his estranged son, a high school gymnast, teams up with his dad's attractive female partner to stop the psychopathic hermaphroditic gang leader who killed him and now plans a major terrorist attack. I love it. And that is, of course, never too uh, By the way, I, I just want to do one of the jokes that <laughs> Paul in says, just so you know how funny he is. Okay. <clears throat> the question on Hollywood Squares is, how many men on a hockey team? <laughs> and Paul in says, oh, about half. <laughs> That is amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty wild joke for 1981 or whatever. Oh, man. That is for, so funny. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Are you, I'm going to do... Um... <laughs> so, oh, I thought you had it picked out. Okay. I'm ready. Are you yeah, ready? Need to, I can read another plot line if you need. You I'm got ready. it? I'm ready. All right. Let me get Stoney. Stoney, come in here. 
All right, okay, get ready you... for your throat to explode. Do a do an impression of Paul Lynde, Stoney. Okay. All right, ready. <laughs> uh, is it against the law in Texas to call a Marine a sissy? I guess I'll have to take the law into my own hands. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Stoney, Pretty good. for, for uh, Pretty good. granting my wish. <laughs> and by the way, we're real big fans, just huge fans. Um, my mom told me to throw out your records, but, you know, I kept, I hit them. I hit them from them, Stoney. All right, I'm just going to take this mic from you. <laughs> turn, his vote, turn his levels down. Was that your Gene Simmons impression, Stoney? Yeah. <laughs> Women are good right, for on your one way out. thing. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> on your way out, do uh, DD, Ramon. DD, <laughs> Ramon. <laughs> Uncanny. Now I'll do Tom Waits. <laughs> 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 All right. Thanks, Stoney. And thank you to everyone for listening to us. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Find Wait. us on every single platform. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it wait i think i didn't get to do my tom waits impression. oh okay we're gonna go out on that <laughs> all right everyone this is uh, your okay. little treat for the end it's from my old stand-up days uh this is my impression of tom waits if the music career didn't work out <laughs> will that be venti or grande <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye.